Well, hello, my name is Professor George Adams, and I have a very simple demonstration to show you in rigid body dynamics. Now, it involves what's called a rattleback, which is this rather innocent piecing look of plastic, which, uh, as you can see, is rounded on the bottom surface, and also in the cross section is also rounded. It may be difficult to see, but there is some asymmetry in that cross section as well. And that asymmetry is going to have a very important role in how this rattleback behaves, as we'll see shortly. And here we have this rattleback. I'm going to put it on this horizontal surface and I'll spin it first in the counterclockwise direction. As you can see, it rotates in that direction without any difficulty. Uh, now, I'll try spinning it in the opposite direction. And as you can see, it doesn't like that for some reason. Let's try it again. I'm going to try and spin it clockwise. As you can see in here, it starts to wobble and rock before turning around and spinning the other way. Now, it almost appears as though it's defying conservation of energy in the sense that if it's rotating clockwise stops and rotates counterclockwise, it appears as though maybe there's a time at which there is uh, very little kinetic energy when it changes directions, little or none. But remember, as it changes directions, it's also rocking back and forth like this. So it does have that kinetic energy of the rocking motion, which is being converted into then the kinetic energy of uh, counterclockwise rotation. In fact, if I do a little experiment, put my finger down on one side and release, you see that rocking motion is converted into rotational kinetic energy. Now, why does this happen? Well, explanation is very complicated mathematically. Uh, it can solve that using Hamilton's principle or Lagrange's equations, but it's not trivial at all. It takes several pages of algebra, and it doesn't necessarily lead to a better physical understanding of the phenomena. Now, let's see if we do a little bit, uh, a little experiment where we put a little bit of water on the surface. And now we'll try spinning the rattle back counterclockwise, does fine. And we'll try spinning clockwise. And it also does fine. So apparently there's some interaction between the as we said before, the asymmetry of the cross-section. Now, the cross-section asymmetry is somewhat complicated. It's not simply uh, asymmetry in any one cross-section, but the asymmetry changes along the longitudinal axis. But it's an interaction of that asymmetry along with dry friction, which is why we did not see that behavior when we put the water down and had uh, a different type of dissipation. Okay, so that uh, concludes this demonstration of the dynamics of a rattleback.